This is a list of just some of the messed up stuff that's happened to RC. She's been a caring mother figure. She's been a romantic interest. She's been a capable and competent tactician and leader of men. She's been a jaded hard ass. She's been an unhinged murderer on a crusade for revenge. But she's also been objectified, vivisected, eaten by a scorpion, vivisected again by Autobots this time. She had to fight her twin to the death. She's been gaslit, coerced. She's been merged with the dead siblings. She had to euthanize her best friend and she was forced to have a sex change. Or was she forced? We're going to talk about all of that. We're going to talk about all of the people she's had to watch die in front of her eyes. So make yourselves comfortable, like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and let's dive right in. RC's introduction was a landmark in Transformers history, but throwing a female Transformer into the mix opened up a whole can of worms, too. It was like, oh, Hot Rod's got a romantic interest. Oh, what a nice motherly figure to Daniel Whitwicky. But wait, what? Transformers have gender? I thought they were just robots. And this notion was parodied in the Marvel comics in which she was created by the Autobots to chill out a bunch of hormonal middle-aged feminists who were complaining that the Autobots had no female members. The Autobots explained that they were a genderless race, and it was just a coincidence that they happened to have characteristics in line with what we consider male. But the housewives, I mean, successful career women, just would not let it go. So Optimus, just to get a moment's peace and quiet and watch the football, brought a whole new life into existence in the form of RC. Were they happy? Were they f Why is she pink? Why is she skinny? Why am I not a princess living in a sky castle? It's all the patriarchy's fault. The Autobots must have been thinking, Jesus Christ, what kind of space rock have we landed on here, man? And I don't want to be chauvinistic here, you know, that's not who I am. But women be crazy. Men also be crazy, though. Dogs are literally the only things that make sense. Can they have food? No, Charlie. Can they soon have food? No, Charlie. Can I snip your butthole? Anyway, following the events of the 86 movie, in the Marvel movie tie-in comics, her and Hot Rod drifted apart after he became Rodimus, and she became bored with her guard duties on Autobot City on Earth, and she found her faith in Rodimus wavering. Call it a crisis of faith. So one day she left her post and went out for a quick spin to clear her head or whatever only to find the Quintessons attacking upon her return. The Quintessons wounded her and then used her as bait to try and lure Rodimus into a trap, which resulted in them stealing the Matrix of Leadership. Luckily, Hot Rod woke up Metroplex, who helped devastate the Quintesson forces, and seeing Hot Rod's victory without the Matrix went some way to restoring her faith in him and the Autobot cause, I guess. Ooh, seeing his victory without the Matrix restored my faith in him and the Autobot cause, I guess. Ooh. Later, when the spirit of Unicron possessed Hot Rod, who threatened to tear his fellow Autobots limb from limb, RC was the one who suggested killing her old friend, which might seem pretty harsh, you know, but in hindsight might have been the right course of action as, as this would inevitably happen again further down the line. Then, in the subsequent seasons of Gen 1, she was paired up with Springer more than Hot Rod, and she was one of a group of Autobots that had her mind transplanted into a synthetic human body. Oh, all of us? Rodimus? Springer? Ultra Magnus? What's happened to us? She was told she was crazy and then thrown in jail by these guys who didn't believe what she was saying. We have a nice doctor who will be stopping by a little later. What the f that sounds sus as f and listen to this music, it sounds like a f nightmare. Oh no. All of us And at one point she comes face to face with her old body as it's being driven by one of the bad guys. It's a shame that this was a pretty rushed app which didn't get to explore its full potential. But it's the first time that we see Arcee's mind and body literally be separated and this kind of schism occurring. And this is a theme that's going to pop up time and time again. In the Transformers Generations manga, she changed her body several times and took on different names too. Here she's Alita 5, and then she took on a synthoid form and went by the name of Alita. <laughs> then in the three-part finale of Gen 1, Daniel Witwicky is fatally injured when he gets mauled by Snapdragon, meaning that he needs to wear an exosuit to survive. So RC agrees to partner with him in the Headmaster program, which if you don't know already is when a smaller life form becomes the head of the Transformer. It's a process that gives both partners several enhancements as a result of the symbiosis, like the smaller one gets all of the benefits of a larger, more powerful body, and the Transformer gains an extra perspective on the battlefield. Agility, reaction speed, targeting, accuracy. These are the things that are like often enhanced by the process. Oh yeah, and here she gets eaten by Scorpion up too.
But the whole headmaster's process came at a cost, because as explored in the 3 H comics, Daniel sacrificed his life to defeat an army of deranged nightbirds. And died. Because that's what sacrificing your life is. Anyway, his death put R.C. into a deep depression. Hello, darkness, my old friend. On top of all the maternal instincts she felt towards Daniel, the headmaster's process gives them an even stronger mental connection. So the loss of one of the partners is felt extra harshly. And she gradually became more and more reclusive before eventually retreating into the bowels of Cybertron entirely. I don't want to see anybody. At this stage, it was said that she got the ability to foresee deaths of bots before they happened, something which drove her even closer to the brink of madness. She changed her alt mode to a techno-organic spider and taught herself the ancient martial arts of crystallocution, which targets an opponent's fracture points apparently, and Tekaido, which I think is that thing where they fold little bits of paper to make swans and little unicorns and owls and stuff. Anyway, Rodimus tried to recruit her into a new lineup of records, but she was reluctant until she befriended a bot called Fractal, who was later put in danger, so she got involved in the fight to defend him. This was an adventure which ended up with Arcee having to watch Rodimus die right in front of her. as he drained the evil cryotech of the immense power he had stolen from Primus. Unable to contain this power, Rodimus died. So that was all pretty damn bleak. The Dreamwave continuity had an interesting origin for her, with her working in a hazardous materials plant before the Civil War. She ended up at the tip of a love triangle between her, Hot Rod, and Springer, before she turned out to be a Quintesson spy and member of their elite female spy team. Tasked with keeping an eye on the whereabouts of the Matrix of Leadership and anyone who might be able to become its bearer. During a date with Springer, R.C. confided in him that she wasn't sure of her place in the world or her purpose in life or if she even belonged on Cybertron at all. Now this was probably a hint at the doubt she was having at the thought of being a double agent and having to betray her friends, but again, it's all pretty weighty stuff. And that only got worse as the Quintessons made clear their intentions to exploit her friendship and get control of their newly found Matrix bearer, Hot Rod. Are you talking about me? That's funny because I was just thinking about me. Okay, bruh. Anyway, as I've mentioned before in other videos, Dreamwave went bankrupt before this storyline could conclude, so that sucks. In G.I. Joe vs. Transformers, her romantic pairing was with Bumblebee, who got badly injured by Serpentor, or Serpent OR, I never know which, and then killed when the villain became Serpentor Prime. So there you go, Bumblebee. In Mini Mayhem, she wasn't invited to a party thrown to honor the anniversary of the 1986 movie. <laughs> Why? I don't know, maybe she made certain comments about the director. Then in Transformers vs. G.I. Joe, she, she was captured along with a group of allies and mind controlled, forced to transform into car mode and run over her friends. That's fucked up. Then when they got free from that, she combined with the protector bots to form Defensor and she had to become his crotch. I mean, somebody's gotta be the crotch, right? Also, it made Defensor look like he was wearing pink speedos. That's amusing. She got dressed up as a French maid for Halloween in the Japanese Legends world to stop Megatron's scheme to get Energon by, I don't know, it had something to do with trick or treating. Yeah, obviously a Japanese one, this. Anyway, she got webbed up by Black Arachnia before becoming a cheerleader and got her skirt pulled up and then had footballs kicked at her by the mischievous Wheelie. Apparently, Wheelie's got form for this. Wait, what? And later she got covered in bugs when clones of Insecticon Kickback swarmed the city. Then in the Q-Formers cartoon, Optimus was fantasizing about her in the bath as he tried to find ways to make Transformers more popular and give the whole franchise more sex appeal. You know what this franchise needs? More tits and ass, that's what it needs. The, they're all robots though. Tits and ass. If you don't know what Ask Vector Prime is, it's this thing where fans can ask questions about Transformers and like, Vector Prime himself answers you, or sometimes other characters too. Started out on the Hasbro website, then it moved to Facebook, but basically it made the whole gender issue even more complicated when RC was portrayed as a biologist whose protoform was actually male. Then, after the Civil War, her research uncovered gender dysphoria disorder, and she wrote a paper on it. R.C. and several others like her underwent reformatting and replaced certain parts of the genetic code. In Synergy, which was this anthology intended to celebrate female Transformers, their creators, and their fans, 
She had this three-page story where she felt kind of lost and purposeless after the end of the Great War, and the whole of Cybertron society struggled to adapt to the ways of peacetime. So in proper born on the 4th of July fashion, she struggled getting back into society. She had a bank loan refused. She gets into a road rage fight when somebody cuts her up in traffic. And she gets the blues when she looks at the state of the world around her. <laughs> she goes home to a kind of crappy apartment, but at least she only has a cat for company. But you know, the cat seems to cheer her up, so that's cool. And I don't know if this comic is meant to be as depressing as I found it. Like, it could just be that I'm overthinking it, but huh, I was hoping for a happier ending for her. It was basically a few panels away from falling down on Cybertron. Only a cat for company, really? Oh. But if you thought that was depressing, let's talk about IDW's 2005 continuity, the home of sunshine and rainbows. In this one, she was Galvatron's twin sister. They were both from a barbaric time well before the war, and once again, she would later describe herself as having been forged male, but talked about how she was conflicted about it and that her old identity was a lie that she told herself. So I, I don't know, I'm confused. I, I'm, I'm confused already. She was forced to battle her twin brother in the gladiatorial pits until only one survived. I mean, how messed up is that, forcing one twin to kill another? Luckily, they were saved by Megatronus and eventually became his lieutenants, being given rule of the Badlands and its Darklander army. She was then manipulated by Shockwave, along with many others, to be fair, into aggressively expanding the Cybertronian Empire, and she took part in a massacre of the Antillan species. Just slide that one in there in a war that only ended when the Antillan made the doomsday device known as the Talisman and destroyed his own planet. Later, Jaxus subjected her to a series of experiments. Basically, he was trying to reintroduce the lost concept of gender back into the Cybertronian species. And how do you think he did that? With a microscope? Maybe wrote a fucking paper? No! Horrific experiment! And this is the gender issue that I mentioned earlier. The big question being, was this a forced sex change? And honestly, the issue is kind of a hand grenade because if it is, then it's horrific. And if it was by choice, then that makes RC the first transgender transformer. There was even beef between the writers over it. It was eventually clarified in a conversation with human female Marissa Fairborn, where RC told her that she's always been trans, describing herself as forged male and the RC had voluntarily sought the assistance of Jaxus to aid her in transition. Anyway, after these experiments, she became violent and erratic and went on a galaxy-spanning mission to destroy all traces of Jaxus' work. And of course, kill the man himself. She befriended Anode, a bot who'd voluntarily transitioned from male to female, but when Anode disappeared, RC became unstable again and set about wiping all of Jaxus' work from the universe carving a swathe of destruction across the galaxy before being arrested by Ultra Magnus and sent to prison Garrus 9, where her spark was kept separated from her body. Now this was pretty much standard practice in Transformers prisons, but weirdly she found a kind of peace in that state. When the prison was invaded by Banzaitron, Fortress Maximus freed RC to help fight off this invading force. And not only did she do that, she hunted them down afterwards too, torturing this guy to track them down then murdering a whole bunch of Micromasters before finally tracking down Jaxus. And because of the power of the dead universe, which kept rejuvenating him, she took pleasure in killing him over and over and over and over again for six years. An experience which RC later described as the only time she'd been truly happy. God damn. Later, she worked under Shadybot Prowl, doing his dirty work as an assassin, assassinating former Senator Ratbat to prevent him killing Bumblebee. She could have probably brought him in, but hey, you know, if no one's looking, I guess. Then Sunstorm fell under her sword before she took on the Constructicons by herself to save Blur. She later killed Trigger Happy and Blot. No, not Ravage! Animal cruelty! Animal cruelty! And she cut Rumbler's Rumblers off? How's he gonna rumble? I can still shit in your ears. <laughs> and stabbed Sideswipe through the chest, pinning him to a wall before stabbing Bombshell in the head to cut off his connection to a rampaging Devastator and shutting him down. Why would she stab her friend Sideswipe, you ask? Well, things got kind of double-crossy at that stage. So she inflicted a wound on him that she knew wouldn't kill him to keep up the masquerade of whatever it was she was trying to masquerade. Uh, complicated. Anyway, after all this, Starscream took control of everything after Megatron was defeated, and he booted her and all of the other Autobots out of the city. 
Here, she kind of found herself at a little bit of a loose end, unable to connect with the other Autobots, and even her friend Sideswipe kind of rejected her, telling her that she was just getting in the way. Monk. But the issue of whether she fit in with the other Autobots or not was overshadowed by the appearance of the Necro Titan, which led her to having her arm and her leg blown off. Later, RC joined Prime on a mission to Earth to save Alpha Trion, and pretty much took control of the Autobots after Optimus had to go back to Cybertron and Prowl's loyalty was in question. This effectively made her second in command of the Autobots. She got an eye stabbed by Snake Eyes before trying to acquire a Positron Core for the injured Sideswipe, who at one point she said was the only bot to ever understand her. He was in a pretty bad way at this stage, and the Positron Core could get him out of his robo coma, but she had to tussle Retgar and the Junkions over it, and the Core was hit by a ricochet and blew Retgar's body to dust and left Sideswipe without his core. RC collapsed in desperation and eventually her and Sunstreaker made the decision to end his life support. So after her longtime friend passed away, she was comforted by Aileron and this grew into a full, well, see for yourself. This seemed to grow and blossom until RC declared that she felt like she'd finally found someone to fight for. And once everything was all said and done after the defeat of Unicron, she said that she had finally made peace with herself and the universe and proven that she had finally become everything that she was always meant to be. So finally, some kind of ending that's not depressing as fuck. Okay, jumping to the aligned continuity, she started out as a spy in the Decepticon control city of Kaon, where she was rescued at one point by Cliffjumper. She rescued him back, the two became friends and the rest is history. You know what's coming, right? Yep, she had to watch Cliff get mutated into a horrific dark Energon zombie and later die in front of her eyes. And also Tailgate, yep, let's not forget him. Arachnid took both her and her partner Tailgate prisoner. And yeah, RC was rescued by B and Cliff, but they got there too late to help poor Tailgate. So yes, more trauma for RC. By the way, this version of RC, probably my favorite version of RC, I think. In the 2015 R.I.D. cartoon, she was blacklisted by the new High Council for being a supporter of Optimus Prime. <sighs> then she was webbed to the ground by Arachnid and tickled half to death, according to Arachnid's Creo bio. In the 2019 IDW continuity, she was in a relationship with a bot called Greenlight and was selected to mentor a young bot called Gage. She grew very protective over Gage until the kid was stolen and mind wiped by Heretic. So now she's had a child kidnapped. Uh, just casually every parent's worst nightmare right there. In Transformers vs. Terminator, she trusted the T-800 enough to open up the Autobot weapons cache for him, only to have him dive in, take a bunch of explosives and plant them around the place and blow the place up. What has the world come to when you can't trust a literal killing machine? She got captured by Soundblaster in War for Cybertron, who threatened to sell her off to the Decepticons. She also had to carry this guy on her shoulders. That could not have been comfortable. She was then captured by Double Dealer, who brought her in front of the Quintus on Decius, who was about to put his judgment on her, but she escaped from that too. Yay. She made friends with the pony, Rarity, after being transported to the My Little Pony Land Equestria. And she teamed up with Rarity to defeat Thundercracker, Starscream, and Skywarp. The Bayverse didn't make her identity issues any simpler, splitting her into three. Now in the movie, it's not clarified whether it's the one consciousness spread over the three bodies or whether it's three separate consciousnesses. Consciousnesses. The dialogue even refers to her as RC twins, which is extra confusing. RC twins, target coming your way. Do you know what? I've got a funny feeling maybe someone just forgot a comma in the script or maybe the actor just messed up and it's actually supposed to be RC twins, target coming your way because Skids and Mudflap are also in this scene. But in the IDW movie comics, it's explained how this mad scientist called Flatline who was working under Thundercracker strapped her to a table again, took her spark out of her body again and this time fused it with the dead bodies of her dead sisters, Chromia and Alita One. Okay. Oh wait, no, that is new. And fucked up. Like what's next? Are they gonna sew her mouth to another bot's butthole? Anyway, in this one, it definitely seems like she is one consciousness spread across the three bodies. They finish each other's sentences or sometimes all three say the same thing. Anyway, one of the RC bot's presence right here means that she had to watch Prime die once again. Anyway, apparently two of the three bots were killed in the movie's climactic battle, although I don't remember seeing that happen personally myself. And we don't know what happened to the third, although she is written up as KIA 
in the next movie. Apparently, Michael Bay wanted these three to combine. It was just deemed that there was too much going on in the movie already, so they canned it. Seriously though, seeing this, the state she's in after being beaten by Thundercracker is absolutely nauseating. Transformers Animated had a surprisingly dark storyline for her. Uh, I can't move my leg. She was originally a school teacher who then became a spy upon the outbreak of the war. And she was originally intended to be the commander of Omega Supreme, so she was given the access codes enabling control of the big guy. Then, after being taken prisoner by lockdown, she had her memory wiped after an EMP burst and completely forgot who she was. You all right, RC? Who's RC? Then, when she was taken back to Cybertron, Ultra Magnus ordered that she be subjected to open processor surgery on her vivisected head in an attempt to obtain the access code for Omega Supreme's activation. A surgery that they couldn't get her to wake up from. So they basically shoved her in a cupboard for four million years. Oh my god! That should have probably been on my worst things the Autobots have ever done list. And it wasn't until the Decepticons got into her head, went through all of her memories, not intrusive at all, and woke her up just to confirm that she had the codes before going, nope, we've got everything we need now and putting her back into stasis again. Shockwave next brought her online when it was time to activate the bots, which she refused to do. So he's like, okay, I'm going in to get them manually. The Autobots eventually got her mind back using the same EMP that wiped her memory in the first place. But wow. Then there were a couple of episodes that were like script readings, I think, where Sari Sumdak, this other kid she got close to, nearly got caught in a trash compactor. Which when you see it in a cartoon, you might think, ah, oh, clumsy, you know, she'll be fine. But if that happened ah. right in front of you in real life, you'd carry it with you until your death. Then in Prevenge, another script reading, where random Transformers from the multiverse were plucked out of their realities by some mysterious force, Sari was abducted before RC met with a bot called SureShock, who tried to power link with her, which she found kind of inappropriate. Dinner first, buddy. Anyway, she was thrown in with the other bots who'd been botnapped from their realities and their captor, who turned out to be this sucksoid, who was tired of being a figure of ridicule, ordered them all to fight to the death. And if they didn't, he'd detonate a dark energon bomb. Turned out he was bluffing though, so Snarl yeeted him as far as the eye could see and everyone had a good laugh about it. That's not a joke, that's actually how it ended. So there we have it, and I think we can all agree she has had a pretty rough life. And the thing is, I'm pretty sure I haven't covered everything that's ever happened to her either. And that's not even counting, you know, the Japanese comics doing what they do, basically. And of course, the fans, what the fans do. I mean, I've seen some wild stuff. Google at your own discretion, honestly. Oh, and just one bit of trivia to end. RC was also one of the candidates in the Power of the Primes fan poll to figure out who the next bearer of the Matrix of Leadership should be. Optimus Primal got the vote, but apparently the designers had already started work on a potential RC Prime, and apparently her name was gonna be Arcana Magnus. But all this said, I am very curious to see what they do with her in Rise of the Beasts. I've got a feeling they'll just go back to her being the girl bot and not go into any great detail on the character. That's my feeling anyway. I do think she looks absolutely ace though, and I can't wait to see it. Next up on the channel, we've got a video about Unicron's powers and abilities. Oh no, you know what? I already posted that one. Not that many people watched it, but that's a video about the most powerful artifacts in Transformers. I started work on most powerful beings that aren't Autobot or Decepticons, but trust me, that's gonna take a little while. It's a long one. And I've started my replay of War for Cybertron. So keep an eye on my gaming channel. I'm gonna start rounding up my playthrough of Devastation, and then we'll move on to the Cybertron games. You guys, once again, I have to say a huge thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. It really does mean a lot to a fuck up like me. Now it's time for me to take my meds. So I will see you very soon for the next one. Thanks again for watching and cheerio, bye.